Welcome to 2020, new year, new decade, and I do hope your holiday was lit. This a lit, not like the lit you are thinking of. Without wasting much time, let's get straight into part two of the electricity situation in Zimbabwe. The fate of Zimbabwe's power situation is rather interesting. The immediate future is quite tragic, but before we write ourselves off, let's start with a bit of inspiration. Zimbabwe has around 10 power stations, with five of them being owned and run by ZPC, and the other five being owned and run by private companies. Curious who the five private companies are? I got you! From the hills of the Eastern Highlands in Chimanimani, we have Border Timbers with a 0.5 megawatt thermal plant making use of waste products from sawmills, sawdust, shavings, the lot. We also have Immaculate Technologies or better known as Rusitu Power Company that have a hydroelectric plant along the Nyahode River producing an estimated 1.7 megawatts of power. Down in the low veld, we have the Nzimbe boys from Triangle Limited and Hippo Valley, as well as Green Fuels, with a thermal power station each that make use of Nzimbe waste, or as they like to call it, bag gas. Trying to be fancy, these guys, ne? The three plants produce an estimated total of 94 megawatts of power. Those who are following closely have noticed something happening here. In part one of the Zesa situation, Four of the five ZPC-run power stations are making use of non-renewable fuel, coal. In comparison, the privately owned power stations are running on renewable energy. In fact, four of the five privately owned power stations are running from waste material obtained from their factories. Take note of this point because it's going to come in handy real soon. Now we move on to the more tragic part of the video. So all the thermal power stations run by ZPC were built in the pre-colonial era. Back then, Zimbabwe was a British colony and so the hardware, technology and standards present at the time were British. This means that all the repowering projects that ZPC has planned will most definitely require new parts from the fellas in the UK that made these thermal power stations. Yes, Forex is a big issue in the motherland, but let's say we had the Forex. There is a bit of a movement in Europe of reducing CO2 emissions and it's serious. Cars are now being fitted with smaller turbocharged engines or with batteries and motors. But more worrying is the fact that the UK is one of the countries that have had big progress in decommissioning most of their coal-fired power stations. This means the guys that are supposed to be selling ZPC spare parts are now closing shop. So then even if we have the Forex, we won't be able to buy the parts very, very soon. So if ZPC is to repower the existing coal-fired power stations, probably they have a maximum of five years to buy all the parts they need, otherwise risk not being able to repair existing power stations. Non-renewable forms of energy are rapidly losing favor, and unless we can develop our own tech, there is great urgency required in getting them power stations up and running probably before 2025. Otherwise, we will need to ditch them and completely push hard on alternative fuels. Zimbabwe has plenty of sunshine throughout the year. We have coal reserves enough to last us decades that we can even convert to petroleum products. Hexasol in South Africa is a whole company producing fuel from coal. We have Gweru, Zishavani, Chivu, Blawayo, Mashingo, and the Eastern Highlands cited as the best places for a wind farm. We also have a lot of waste in urban areas that could be burnt in furnaces to produce energy. And this is not restricted to just ZPC. Anyone can go to the Zimbabwe Energy Regulation Authority or ZERA and obtain a power producing license. It's possible for Harare City Council to have thermal power stations at its rubbish dumps and sell the power to ZESA. Or for guys like DPA to put up solar farms and sell the power to ZESA. I mean, DPA alone has put up solar systems with a total of about 946 kilowatts at seven sites across Zim. For those number lovers, this translates to all private players contributing to 14% of Zimbabwe's total power production. It's a pretty reasonable effort. 
Really, Zimbabwe is well placed for clean energy and can fare well even without the coal-fired power stations. The power situation at this moment is a total disaster, but given the urgency it demands, it most definitely will be turned a full 180 degrees within the next decade. This is all on the final half of the electricity situation in Zimbabwe. If I had missed anything or I butchered some facts, the comment section is open.